One of the sad realities that lockdown has illustrated is not only the rampant inequality in our society, but also how government continues to fail the citizens of this republic. This pandemic has proved that we truly are a third world nation dependent on foreign aid and our lives really don't matter to some. And so I, I decided to come and join this trial. I'm not scared because like I, I want to know whether this vaccine will it able to work, but I'm willing it that it uh, can it work for this COVID. I'm hoping that this vaccine is going to work. The incentive, a bonus Mshongo says, not a primary reason for his participation. He reveals he was paid 100 rand during the screening period, 300 rand on a second visit, and he will receive another 300 rand per visit or checkup. Mshongo tells us he heard about the trials at the hospital where his child is participating in another study. I mean, there's no cure, but people are out here recovering. And yet it is reported that this week, South Africans volunteered to participate in vaccine testing for a disease that has apparently not claimed a single Namibian life. And a vaccine that was purported to be years in the making is suddenly available. And Cyril is meeting with Bill Gates. Hi, Bo. And then I saw this. Hello, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Prime Minister. How are you? I'm uh, glad to call to uh, first uh, check in on how things are going and, and congratulate you on uh, COVID-19. You, uh, you acted very quickly. Yes, we started early. As we had about two cases only, we took drastic steps because okay. new cases are now coming up because of travelers, the truck drivers who are coming back from South Africa. So we got new cases again, three of them. But our total is so far good, 25 altogether, and about uh, nine have recovered. Uh, uh, we're now dead so far, so we knock on the wood. To a small country like Namibia, and we appreciate that, that you are looking at us as partners. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> okay, my friend. Very good care, and thank we'll you. see you again. Bye-bye. Riyad Chipanga, yet another Namibian-turned-activist, has made it her purpose to hold government accountable for the deplorable living conditions that those living in her community endure. She alerted its rap to the plight of another incident in which food meant to assist vulnerable communities was distributed to a select few. Only certain parts of the Komastal constituency in Otomise Sievendalan area are electrified, and after decades of having lived there, not all the residents have been allowed to claim their arvan and build solid houses. Ria Chipanga decided to once more take issue with the community leader in her area as food parcels intended for distribution amongst the vulnerable and destitute were once again allegedly misappropriated. I'm the one who are fighting for our land here in Sivendeland, Axteland. We are at the renting heirs now 19, 20 years. Illegal heirs also. City of Vantuk didn't want to give us this land. We are tired to stay, stay in these shake houses. Yesterday, one of the CTC leaders his name is Heitua. He's the owner of the shipping. He has tell us yesterday we must come and collect the food here. I come here to ask him when is the food given. He was the people's name was standing here inside. It was the inside banking. I go inside. They were starting to give the mask. They inside in the shipping. I ask him when are you starting to give the food. He tell me you are not having that right to come in my shipping and ask me here. I ask him, why are you uh, doing the communi uh, community work here in your shipping? Why don't you do the community work outside? That's why I, if you're doing outside, then I will come outside and ask you there. He tell me that I must go out of his shipping. I go out of his shipping. He tell where is a meeting. It will start like six o'clock, half past seven that time. Okay, what is the meeting for? They said for that covered 19 foot. We will first do the meeting and after meeting, we will give you the food. We come to the meeting there, 6 o'clock yesterday. He was saying that we must contribute. They took two secretaries. And these secretaries must be paid from the community. Because these two secretaries must do the work. They must write our names to get this covered 19 foot. I ask him, why must we pay these two secretaries? You are most the citizens to do work that to do that work. Is is it not of what is why are you the citizens? Where are we getting that money to pay that secretaries? 
It's not us who are taking that two secretaries. And where are we getting that money to pay that? They said, if you don't contribute, then you are not allowed to get that food. And you must fill in these database forms. We must fill in these database forms. I ask him, is this database forms not a political party's forms? Why is the database forms involved in this? He said, these database are coming from the minister's office. I ask him, database are for the political parties. And why must we receive our food with the voters' cards? ID card is already enough. They said that so that they must know that we are Namibian. And I ask him, did my ID not show you that I am Namibian? Is ID, my ID, on my ID, is it stating that we are Namibian? When the food is coming every time, they are riding the laces. We are giving in that laces at the council's office, council, Commercial Constituency Council, Angola's office. But the food, that the, the laces we are giving in, we don't get the food. If the food is coming out, then the other peoples who are not getting the, uh, writing the names, they must receive that food. The laces are still slaying there. They say the lace have been thrown away. I ask him why did the council throw away the lace? The lace have been thrown away from the ministers. Uh, we don't know which ministers. They just said it's from the ministers. I, I ask him which ministers. They don't say to me which ministers was it. So the, they must know from which minister is it happening that. It's not now that this problem is starting. When COVID-19 food is starting, coming, then we must get that food in this shipping. If it's not here, then one CDC's house is there, then it must be in that house. We must receive that food. And it's not all of the people who are receiving that food. There are people who are really hungry people. I already tell him, I know in my area people who are the people who really people need food. Let me help you to do that work. They said no. When we arrived at the scene, the Shabin was open. However, a young woman quickly locked the doors as we arrived. Now, listen to me. Why must you come Listen to me. And you are, if you are doing a meeting with the community, then you must be... You refuse the person and we obey the person. I'm, 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 I'm... Don't answer the question. Don't turn the You are the one who is the person and we are the ones who is going to pay for that. For what reason? says she does not know how Mr. Hadua, to whom she refers to as a CDC, got the mandate to distribute food meant to alleviate the suffering of the poor in her community. This morning, I come to you. The list I sent also on your uh, WhatsApp that the people was killed here. In, out from inside to outside in the queue for that food and for the last lace to write these names. I ask him, why must you use the political party papers? Why? This is the political party. We don't agree that one. I don't agree. Just bring the food and if a person is receiving the food, then they can just write his name. Then, they, then, they, then they, uh, you know that we receive the food. This community is Ochimisa Komasal constituency community. We, we don't have any community here. 
We are not having a community. The community is that citizens. But the citizens are not doing his work what they must do. And we are not having any community in this location. I don't know who put them that on that citizens. I don't know who put them there. It's many times. And we are tired now. We are tired. People who are getting is the Oshivampo people. His members and his friends, that's the people who are getting. Both of the Oshibampo peoples. But they are taking out Tamaranamas, Oshio Hereros, Oshibaba Pastor peoples, they are taking out. But both of them are the Oshibampo peoples who are getting that covered 19 foot. And it's the most of them, it's the people who are having the shippings here, his friends. He is now here inside in the shipping there. They just close, they see, and they just let close the door. He's there inside, I see him, he's there inside. Ria Chipanga was incensed when she found out that a CDC in the area where she lives was tasked with distributing food meant to assist those who continue to suffer after lockdown and did so from his shabin, whilst allegedly excluding non-Oshiwambo-speaking residents. She called the Komasdal constituency councillor Samuel Angolo to inform him of what was happening. When I called him for comment, however, he denied any knowledge of what was happening and asked me to wait so that he can conduct a thorough investigation into what was happening there. I did tell council also yesterday, it's many times that I'm inside in the council's office with these problems. Our councillor Angolo is lying. Let me tell you the truth. He's lying many times when I've come to the office. The uh, councillor is also not in his work. He's also in the workers of council. They didn't know where the councillor is. We must just take him off because he doesn't do his work and he's in his offices. Where are he? Why can he people not know? Why can the secretary of council not know where the councillor is? It's many letters. I also have letters that I have read to councillor. I'm having the evidence. The evidence is at my house. I'm having evidence, many evidence I'm having. And I bring in that evidence to council's office. And councillor is lying. Yesterday night time, I told him also that meeting about of. He was saying he didn't know about the meeting. Cecilia Petrus, a resident of the area whose sister is allegedly dating the CDC representative, a certain Mr. Hadua, disputed the claims made by Riet and believes that the CDC are doing their best. Yesterday we had a meeting down there, down, uh, down there where, the, where they usually meet. Then, yeah, exactly. Then that they do, uh, the suggestion was just like, it's not a must. He just said people should contribute $2 for the person that's writing their names and all that. Then people started doing, making a conflict about it. It was like all up and all up, and the lady was like, she called the council and everything. Then for the bar, because it's where he stays at Edua, he has nowhere to go make it. He suggested like people should come to his place, so we write the names like down. And he did not do it inside the bar, it was outside. No, it's actually also a good idea, it's not really bad. Because for some people, they, some of them, they don't have their IDs, and you, in, case for, if, in case you don't have your ID, then you have to use your voter's card. Because actually it doesn't depend on what you voted or anything. The thing is, it goes to every ordinary person. It doesn't mean it's not for political parties. I sent an email to the Comas governor, Laura McLeod Kachirua, to ask her to help us to get to the bottom of this. The registration of the food beneficiary is done at a constituency level by the Disaster Risk Management Committee members, of course, under the supervision of the constituency councillor. There are also set criteria as to who to register in order to receive these food parcels. As is per the National Disaster Risk Management guidelines for the most vulnerable people affected by the lockdown during state of emergency, which are actually the following. Most vulnerable persons and here we are looking at people without shelter who do not benefit from, the min from any other ministry. We are also looking at street vendors who lost income due to lockdown. And also remember, this food exclude all persons on the government food baskets and those on the social net, nets, like the pensioners, the food bank beneficiaries, the social grants, 
drought relief food beneficiaries and for now and so on. Having said that, the food parcels in most cases that are received by Commerce Regional Council or the constituencies is either coming from the office of the OPM or it is a private donation. Now for proper adherence to the COVID-19 measures and regulations, the region resolves that these food parcels must, must be distributed on a house-to-house -house basis. Also, the Regional Council has resolved for better accountability, transparency, monitoring and record purpose, the donation must not be directed, but rather delivered to the Office of Commerce Regional Council headquarters at the office of the CRO. I asked Governor Laura McLeod Katura what recourse there is for those who have been denied access to what has now been termed COVID food. Whatever is received is directly distributed or allocated to the constituencies for proper distribution to the rightful beneficiaries. Since the inception of this program, we as a region have never received enough food for everybody. If a beneficiary did not receive any, anything during a, a certain or a given distribution, such beneficiary is advised to be patient and at least to receive in the next round according to the registration list. In actual fact, these distributions is following the registration list to the latter. If there appear to be any valid, irregular, valid irregularities or discrepancies in the distribution process, it must be reported to the constituency relevant structures for proper investigation and redress. If the structure of the constituency does not help to, to, to address the issue, it can equally as well be reported to my office. Therefore, I equally still urge our staff members at the constituency level, under the leadership of the constituency's councillors, to adhere to the guidelines in terms of identification of vulnerable people in our region, as well as to correctly and deliberately follow the right criteria as to who should receive these food parcels in order to avoid any unnecessary complaints. Ria Chipanga, a resident turned activist following the inaction of government on land and housing issues, showed us some more contentious ills in the community, including the communal toilets, which have been out of operation for years. She says she's been writing letters for years to try and get answers, even to the president. However, her pleas have fallen on deaf ears. The situation here, 2000, we, City of Hundred Peoples, bring us from the different locations, different constituencies. Okangia Par, Havana, Hakahana, from that locations to here. We are renting now for 90, 20 years in this Ochimisa Sivende land. Our location, uh, city of Hantu peoples didn't want to hand over these rents. They do, we are not allowed it because we are at the renting edge. And we are not allowed it to put maybe even our own toilets in our yards, of our own water taps in our yards. They said we can not because it's a renting edge we are at. We are using this toilet, is the old toilet that have been put at 2000. This one toilet is using by 100 houses here. It's only one toilet that is having this one. It's only this one water tap. It's the fitness, it's looking like this. One of the person who is in the toilet and the other one, one are coming from the other house to use the toilet, then they are just standing there to use the tap here. Because you want to pee pee, then they must stand there. Both of the people are going to the rivers to use it there. And the rivers are very expensive for us, more than more than five years, I read also the letters, even to our president, ministers, 
11, 12 ministries, I write it. Political party presidents, I write the letters to them. Until it was the first letters I give in, it was 1st of April, 2020. Until now, they didn't come back and answer us what our furthermore we can do. And we are still waiting now. How long must we stay in these shake houses? We also want to just make an expense from these shake houses. Yes, there was city of Andrew Peoples was last year, 2019. April month, they have gained 10 million money because they said we are destroying the capital city of Namibia with these shake houses. So they t uh, give out this 10 million to take off this all of the shake houses. Why can City of Vandu give that 10 million to make the order here in our location? Uh, LPM President, Landless People's Movement President Bernardo Swarboy, who have stopped for us that problem. But until now, City of Vandu didn't come back. And we are still waiting. Next week, Deputy Maya did call me. They said they are busy now to plan what, how we can start, what they can do with Ochimisa Sivanderland. I asked him, are you busy to plant, uh, are you busy to plant to give us that you are the ownership certificate of a paper that says that you are the certificate, you are the owner. I think that paper is already in your computer, in the city of Vandu people's computer. Why can you just not print out the paper? They say they are busy to plant it. The, they, we will, if someone will get, one person will get here in our location, that corona, many of them we can't, because uh, hepatitis sickness also, many of people were saving, because we are using, more than 100 people are using one toilet, more than 100 houses are using one tap of the water. I'm coming to take it with my hand, but they said we cannot take the hand, and um, he cannot use that one I'm using. They said so. And we can get more than if one person will get there, then more people will receive it. Then that corona will just go like a, I really don't know, but just going like a water like you see there. It will just go like that. Ria Chupanga lives in Ochomise Sevendelan, Komastal constituency, and has for years lamented the living conditions of those who live there. She showed us around the desolate community, living with festering sewers. This area here around are more than 100 people who are also here, but these 100 people are disabled and grandparents who are in this area more than. And it's also only one toilet that is here. The one also broken. broken. It's also broken. It's, and it's the fillers we are using that is around us. Every time after two weeks, after a week, this drain is every time broken. We are still struggling to, we try to call the city of Vandu peoples to make a point here to clean it because it's a corona and corona is also from these failures that can give us the sickness and these disabled peoples who are around here are more than grandparents and disabled peoples i already i also talk about this problem of these grandparents these disabled people peoples with our ministers our presidents i give them also the letters but until now they didn't do anything Oh, our gover my government doesn't make me really, I didn't, I don't know what can I say because I just want to cry about of my disabled people's grandparents who are around here. Because who must stand up to fight for our people's disabled people's, how can they fight for themselves? Who will try for them to take, uh, go out of these shake houses? Is the is it not our government who must help these grandparents, these disabled peoples? It's our government who must help it. But they didn't do it. But when is it voting time, they know that they must be around here to politic and campaign in these shake houses, in these disabled peoples, in these grandparents' houses. They must be coming day to day, night to night, morning to morning. They must come and do what they did. But if we are crying our problems, our government that didn't come out with our problems to help us. Where must we go? Are we also not Namibians? We are also Namibians, but we didn't feel that we are Namibians. This area is also one of the renting areas. And this area doesn't have any toilet. Here is also disabled people's grandparents, are both of them there in this area, but they are not having any toilets. They are using that toilet we was now here, there, that upstate toilet. I already complained city of Vanduk of these things, but they didn't until start now. 
They didn't come back about all this around. And we don't know what is the problem, what must we do to our government. It's also here where the cars of our voting, when they are voting to campaign, then they are standing in this area, our political parties. But they didn't see the fillers here. They didn't try to help us about all this. Where must we throw in the fillers? We don't have any orange drums, we don't have any fillers, things we can input the fillers. And it's just the corona sickness is also giving this sickness can also get we are getting. We don't know where must we starting. I asked the city of Vintuk to balance how they appear to be living their best lives, purchasing vehicles and paying rock star salaries, whilst they clearly are failing to deliver basic human rights to the residents of this capital city. The concerned residents are leasing those plots of 300 square meter from the municipality with two houses per plot and only with the provision of communal shared toilet facilities. Uh, leasing was an, an affordable option then, however, the plots were not fully serviced. In other words, there are no individual water and sewer water connection provided to the individual households. Uh, in last year, in 2019, few more toilets were added to the area through the partnership with the Commerce Regional Council in order to improve the sanitation in the area. While we are acknowledging the high demand of services, the community should also report broken communal toilets to the city for repair at our customer contact center 290-3777. At the moment, there are no outstanding job cuts pertaining to this area. However, our team will visit the area to assess the situation and see how we can improve it. Unfortunately, the constant blockage is a reoccurring incidences in some of the areas because of the use of inappropriate objects such as stick stones and other hard objects that are used that will end up blocking the toilet system. We should safeguard those facilities as our own as they are meant to improve our well-being. Uh, just maybe in, in, in um, holistically to indicate that council has a plan to upgrade the informal settlement uh, which was approved in 2019 we call it a development and upgrading strategy and uh, the improvement of a uh, living condition is one of the priorities in this uh, strategy the process is definitely being undertaken in phases in various areas and ochomise is one of those areas that will be um, looked at and with that it's a wrap follow us on our social media pages and stay woke